Lord God, I thank you for our pastor, Lord God. Father, I thank you that you have given him a rhema word, Lord God, that is going to touch people's hearts today, Lord God. We block and bind any attack of the enemy, Lord God. Father, any, any plot, plan, strategy against the word, we block it. We rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. Any spirit of witchcraft or warlock, Lord God, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. It cannot come against the man of God. It cannot come against your word, Father God. But I pray right now that bondages and chains and strongholds be broken here today as the rhema word goes. Go forward and he speaks it out, Lord God, in power, Lord God, in authority, Lord God, that it may break off any chains, anything that does not need to be there, Lord God, and that your people will receive this word with soft, open hearts and let it be fertile soil, Father God, so that when they leave, they will not be the same, but they will be transformed and that they would walk it out, Lord God. So we just give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise, and I pray right now that you will remove Pastor Andy and use him, Father God, and in Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, how about that brother right there? Dusted. That was their fire. That mic's still hot, amen. Go ahead, y'all tap your neighbor and say, I'm glad to see you in the house of God while the saints playing. <laughs> Did the whole thing. <laughs> say, this is a blessing, y'all. You know, in this modern day church, but this ain't no modern church, but in this modern day church age and period, pastors fighting the saints, the whatever football team is in their state, the rain. Some people don't go to church when it's raining. I, I still don't understand that. But anyway, some people look at the weather. They look at everything but God. Come on, but, I, but I, I think there's a church rising up right here in Avondale, amen, that's coming regardless. Praise God. Is that y'all? Yeah. Amen. So, so uh, I want to elaborate on what he was saying with the food pantry. So there's 60 boxes of groceries back there that we want to give out to families. Amen. And if you, all you got to do is fill out the application. Now, one thing, we've never been governmentally funded for anything. We never received any grants for everything, anything, and we're still not. You know, so that's second half. They need to do their proper paperwork. We're a pantry, so we're trying to get this out to the community. Amen. So if you could fill that out and get the box, maybe you're blessed, but maybe your neighbor's not. You know, maybe you're blessed. And you could, you could get that and you can issue out and give it to people. You can invite other people on Friday Night Fellowship to fill it out and we'll be issuing out all the groceries. And then whatever comes in for every application, then after that with the overflow, we're able to do an outreach. We're able to feed the community like we've been doing. Amen. They say USDA. I just thought ribeye. You heard me? I don't know. <laughs> Praise God. Look, you have not because you has not. We're going to have a ribeye barbecue over here in Jesus' name. Amen. Filet mignon, baked potato with cheese rolling off the side of the plate. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on, it's my wife's birthday. When I, when I say happy, you say birthday. Happy. Birthday. Happy. Birthday. Can, can we lift up in prayer, y'all? Lord, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for... The favor that you've given me through my wife, Father. You said when a man finds a wife, he finds a favor from the Lord, receiveth a good thing. So I thank you for my good thing, Lord. I lift her up to you, Lord. I just speak uh, an increase of grace over her life because she has to deal with me, Father. So we just thank you for that, Father. We thank you for watching her blossom and grow into the woman of God that you declare for her to be, Father. We just speak more, Lord. We speak a, a deeper anointing, Father, as deep calls upon deep, Lord. I speak an increase in every capacity of the word increase her wisdom her knowledge her understanding her discernment father we thank you for her we lift her up to you along with her cares and her burdens in the almighty name of jesus christ we pray and let the church scream amen, amen. i had to do that because if it wasn't for her i wouldn't be here yeah yeah she when i was sleeping she would lay hands on me amen I don't think she knew about the earl yet if not i know i woke up like i had a three piece of chicken you hear me but uh she used to say, and then in, in that time, in that season, when I first got saved, I went to church so she could leave me alone. So she told me to go. My, my lawyer told me to go. I said, I, I must really need to go to church. I got my lawyer and my wife telling me. But anyway, she, she start, I went so she could leave me alone, but then God had another plan. Amen. 
and uh and and just just thankful for her, thankful for Miss Paula because without Miss Paula they wouldn't be her. So it just keeps trickling down. But I'm here to encourage y'all, like y'all are blessing in people's lives, amen. And and people are gonna honor you and, and bless God because of you, amen. And, and I'm speaking that in the prophetic because I know nobody's here by chance or coincidence you didn't come all the way to Avondale on this dead end street just to come you got a calling on your life amen and God always wants to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond what you can even fathom in your natural man he shows no partiality he's no respect of man or person amen so that means he wants to use us all praise God say that's me too amen. that's me too so as he gave me this word, we went to a whole series about the spirit of acceleration because there's a time right now where everything is increasing. Wisdom is increasing. Knowledge is increasing. There's an acceleration that God wants to do because we're closer to the end than ever before. Every great revival that broke out, there was an anticipation of the end time of Jesus coming back. And I'm here to tell y'all we're closer than any of them ever been. Come on, somebody. A hundred years ago, they thought he was coming back. Here we stand a hundred years later feeling like he's coming back. And I know one thing, whether he's coming here or I'm going there, I'm going to meet him regardless. Praise God. So we must always live with an expectation and an anticipation of being able to meet him one day and hearing, well done, my good and faithful servant. Praise God. Because you never know. Like, man, you never know life is not promised. So we need to live life prepared. Praise God. So as that acceleration is coming, and I just see it all around me, like Dustin that, that was just shared up here, they are, he just got a new job at the parish. They moved to the North Shore. I'm sharing a little bit of your testimony, brother. And uh, the mayor's secretary went to him on the job site and said, would you mind doing a Bible study on Wednesday for us here at the job? And, and you, what, what room you going to do it in? In the mayor's conference room, praise God. Okay, have you ever been convicted of a felony? Multiple, I believe, okay. Gotta use anybody. You know what I mean? He got favor. The, the, the mayor's assistant, we expect in revival over there. But God is doing everything at an accelerated pace, amen? So we don't just come to church just to come to church. We need to get this word inside of us because it's the engrafted word that's able to save your souls, amen? The word that is working with your whole body simultaneously with your organ, that is what produces life. That is what's able to save your soul. It's not the word that you just hear because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. But he also says, don't just be hearers only but be doers. Come on, I got any doers in here? Any doers of the word? So as that acceleration's coming, that accountability is going to increase. You got to be accountable to what you're hearing. Amen? So as that accountability increases, that's God bringing you from glory to glory. So he's raising your position in the spiritual realm, but there's a greater expectation on you, not from me, but from God. Because you're hearing the word. Now you got to apply the word to your life. And what happens is when you first say yes to Jesus, you get this revelation that he is real. And to the pure of heart, all things are pure. There's a covering and a grace that's on your life because the pureness of your heart. Amen. But pureness can get tainted. Bad company corrupts good character. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Iron sharpens iron. How many of you know that good friend is the one that tells you the things that you don't want to hear? Come on, somebody. I know I had a, I had a couple of good ones, you know, and I used to not want to hear it. I did, I did, I, I, man, this is my life. Leave it like I'm, I'm living my life. And I had to get broken, praise God. And I thank God for my brokenness, amen? Because although I was broken, I was chosen by God. Maybe you came in here broken, but you're chosen by God. And a broken and contrite heart is what he desires, and he will not refuse. I said in my rap, I said, it was so hard when I thought that I knew it all, and I thought that I had it all, the thought that it goes on, so I flow on, I flow to show y'all, the sun shines after the dark. I said, the sun shines after the rain, because the sun died and rose from the grave. For my God, I go hard in the pain. What's his name? Jesus. It was hard when I thought I knew it all. And you hear that ring? God is calling you today, amen. <laughs> Praise God. It's time to answer the call. It's time to answer the call. Did I say he will use all things? Romans 8.28 is a promise. Amen. 
Don't get mad that you didn't cut your ring off at that moment. Amen. God used that. But right now, can everybody please silence their phone? <laughs> your pureness could get tainted. And I go back to the garden and I go back to Adam and Adam had communion with the Lord. Adam was made in the likeness of God. He took him from dirt and he blew, blew inside his nostrils the spirit of life, the breath of life. But his disobedience brought forth the sin nature that caused him to hide. Your sin will cause you to hide. When I was getting loaded, I wasn't doing it in front of everybody. My sin was causing me to hide, not knowing that he sees all things. Praise God. And I, and I thank God for that. Amen. Your sin will cause you to hide. When you're doing contrary of what you were created to do, that's the essence of being lost. And that's why there's something inside of you knowing that there's more. See, Adam was hiding. God is omnipresent. God sees all things. He's the author and finisher of our faith. God knew exactly where Adam was at. But he said, Adam, where are you? He wasn't asking him a geographical question. He was asking him an internal question. The best questions are the ones that come from the inside of us. When I'm preaching the word and you're like, am I doing that? Or, 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 or some of y'all be like, he's talking about me? Some people get even more personal. I know you was talking about me. <laughs> like, oh, hold on. You better talk to the Holy Spirit. But that's the best sermon is when you leave out of here with a question. Am I doing that? Should I be doing that? Do you want me to do this? Amen. So when I look at the fallen state of man and knowing that man is lost when he's living contrary to what he was created to do because Adam had dominion over all things. Adam had communion with the Lord. He had no reason to be hiding in the bushes. Come on, somebody. You have no reason to be hiding. Last week, I asked y'all that question. Where are you? And I know you're in Avondale. I'm not talking about Avondale. Where are you spiritually? Where are you in your walk? Where are you in life? And the beautiful thing is that God is rich in mercy. He's a merciful God. You could have came in here lost, but amazing grace. I once was blind, but now I see. Come on, can, does anybody know that song? Can anybody help me? I want. Come on. That Oh. Like me, I this side, this side, all together. Man, that's beautiful, multicultural. Y'all were ad libbing each other. Off key, on key, off beat, on beat, multicultural. I believe this is what heaven's going to look like. And I always tell people, if you expect to see one type of people in heaven, you're not ready. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so because of sin, we're born into a fallen state. Lost. But God, in this, man... He's a sovereign God, amen? He's omnipresent. He placed something inside of us that propels us to the Lord. There's something that we were born with, even though it's a fallen state of man, there's something he placed inside of us that propels us to seek for the Lord. We were created to praise the Lord. And if you look at it, man was created to praise, but they're falling the victim of praising the wrong things. Some men are praising football. Some men are praising, and if you look at, look at, some people praise superstars, and the superstar tries to receive the praise, but man doesn't have the capacity to receive praise because praise was never supposed to come to us. It's supposed to come through us to him, and that's why they collapse. That's why they get addicted. That's why they kill themselves because we were not meant to be praised. We were meant to praise the living king, amen? So there's something inside of us that's drawing us to the Lord, but men get so caught up on idolatry and lifting things up before God like I got time but no man today you got time 
Today you got time, cuz. Praise God. Some of y'all cuz. Some of y'all repeated that. That's how I feel in the spirit. Today I got time, cuz, for real. I always got time for the Lord. Amen? We're born lost in a fallen state, and God is omnipresent. Therefore, there's something inside of you, inside of us, that propels us towards the Lord. Say, deep calls to deep. There's something inside of us that he placed there. I believe the Bible says God has placed eternity inside of the hearts of man. He has planted eternity inside of the hearts of man. That means he planted something in you with an expectation that you will put it in the right environment that's conducive to life and growth and you would nourish it with living water. Amen. Praise God. There's a seed inside of you, but you got to feed it so it can grow. Anybody good at planting? Oh, we about to do some planting, right, Miss Paula? Right, right, sister? We're going to have a garden back there. We're going to grow food. We got the food coming, stock, stocking up the can. I don't know what God's doing. I believe, like, in case, in case y'all don't make it in the rapture, y'all could go back there and get whatever y'all need. Because <laughs> I'm gone, you know what I mean? But uh, we got to live. We got to be ready, praise God, because, you know, we're going to feel some of that tribulation. Okay? So let's go to the word. Ecclesiastes 3.11. So y'all know I'm not just making this stuff up. He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. That is key right there. In its time. It might look ugly right now, but it's going to be beautiful in its time. Amen. I know I was ugly. I was a mess in its time. It says how beautiful are the feet of those who spread the good news. Praise God. It doesn't matter if you got hammer time feet. If you preach the gospel, amen, he said your feet are beautiful. He has made everything beautiful and appropriate. Say, in its time. He has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart, a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Yet man cannot find out, comprehend, grasp what God has done, his overall plan from the beginning to the end. Planted that inside of you that will not be filled with anything but him. We try to fill it with other things. Can we be real in church? I've tried to fill it with other things. I'm telling you, ain't no man going to fill it. Ain't no woman going to fill it. Ain't no drugs going to fill it. Ain't no new car going to fill it. No new houses are going to fill it. No designer clothes is going to fill it. It's only going to be filled with God. Nothing this world has to offer you is going to fulfill you. Nothing. You can, you, you can hit these plateaus. You can hit these things that, and these dreams and these goals. And then you arrive to them and you'll be like, man, this is still not it. It, there's more. There's more. It, it also says in the Bible how, 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 how grievous it is to be impregnated with something but not have the strength to deliver what you impregnated with. Oh, but in our weakness, he's made strong. We can do all things through Christ who does what? And, when, and, and once that's getting fulfilled, once you accept Jesus Christ as Lord, now you got to begin to nourish that seed so it can grow. Because now the enemy's coming at you and it feels like your whole world is coming upside down. And you said yes to Jesus, but you're still feeling like this. It's because he's calling you deeper. Come on, deep calls into deep. When I was a kid, I liked to play in the shadow. As soon as I got big enough, I wanted to dive in the water, amen? So when you said yes, can we, can we recognize when we said yes, there was a revelation that we had, and we had a joy upon us when we like, man, he's real. And we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior into our heart, and we felt good, and we was in the right atmosphere, amen, with the, around the right people. But then life happens when we leave out of here. And you come for a little while, and you're feeling good, but then life happens. Never stops happening. Now the enemy's battling you with everything because he's scared of you walking in your full potential. He's scared of you walking in what you were created to do. Amen. So now he's coming at you from every level. But God is just calling you deeper. He said, that was good for this level. But I'm calling you deeper. You're too big to be splashing in the kiddie pool. Come on, somebody. Deep calls upon 
Let's go to King James. I want to show y'all something right here because this is like, this is how man gets confused and begins to be, oh, that's a contradiction. Ecclesiastes 3.11. He had made everything beautiful. That, this is the same verse. I've read out the amplified version first and now I'm reading out of the King James. He had made everything beautiful in his time. And he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. And hold up. But the other one said he placed eternity. And now this one says he placed the world in the heart of man. So then I know there's no contradiction in the Bible. So this is Old Testament. So now I got to go back into the Hebrew text and the original text that it was written in. So now I'm looking at the original word, word where a world was. And I'm going to give it to you right here. The word is olam. I, I'm not Hebrew, but I'll be making it sound Spanish. I think it sounds more. I think it sounds more Hebrew when I do that. Olam, olam, whatever. That's that's the word. Olam, and it means long duration, antiquity, futurity, days of old, eternal, eternity, ever, everlasting, everlasting, forever. He prayed forever. He, he, he placed eternity inside of your heart. And the only thing eternal is Jesus Christ. And through our faith in him, then we become eternal. Praise God. John 3.16. But what really gave me a deeper revelation was antiquity, which means, let, let, let's see what that means, ancient times. So he's placed that in our heart, ancient times. That's why you can say yes to Jesus and really believe and know that you know that you know that he's real. Almost like, like I picture Peter cutting ears off with me, right? I, that would have been me. He would have had two missing ears. Like I, I walk in the Bible and I, my spirit bears witness that all of this is real. That's why you have a knowing inside of you. How many of y'all believe the Bible? Like you know it's real. You might not be able to explain it all. You might not be able to go, 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 go on a debate with somebody, but you know he's real. And you know the Bible's real. See, that conviction is because he placed it inside of you. The days of old, the ancient times, the future right now and forever is inside of you. And that's Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Amen. When I read that, I'm like, wow. Now, now I gather more information and I could debate with you if you want. But I ain't Serena Williams. We're not going to play tennis. I'm not going to go back and forth if I know that you're not trying to receive because I'm not called to win arguments. I'm called to win souls. Amen. So if you're sincere, we can sit down and break bread all day. Amen. But if you're trying to mock God, I'm going to I'm have to dust my feet off because it's a matter of time you entertain foolishness, foolishness is going to rise out. So we got to crucify our flesh and say, I love you, brother. <laughs> and walk off. Praise God. Man, what? No, I'm not going to share that with y'all. <laughs> I'll tell you some of y'all later. No, I had ran. So, I ain't going there. No, they, you know, they got, they got, they got a, a group called the Hebrew Israelites. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, well, we had, you know, I met a couple of them. Praise God. Romans 8, 16. <laughs> the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of... The Spirit itself bears witness. Even though I just got saved and I don't know, but I know yes. that spirit is bearing witness that is stronger than anything that they're doing in the flesh. So I know, man, he's real. Yes. Now, deep calls upon deep. That's when you first come to Christ. Now he wants you to be. He says, study to show thyself approved a workman right needed not to be ashamed, dividing the word of truth. Amen. Yes. So we got to grow. We got to grow up in the Lord. Go ahead and tap yourself and say, I need to grow up. I need to grow up. Deep calls to deep. Who wants to go deep? I'm glad I got five of y'all ready to go deep. <laughs> Amen. Who wants to go deep? Woo! Deep calls to deep. Yeah. If you're in deep darkness, you need deep light. On, Amen. It, 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 the deeper you go in the word of God, the more he can reveal to you. Amen. He cannot reveal it all at one time. When you dive in, you don't just land at the bottom. You got to go through the water. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Deep calls to deep. So calls, deep calls to deep. That means the deep call has a certain sound. There's a certain sound 
that is required to understand the deep things of God. That's when you call in upon God with belief, with humility, with obedience, amen, with, 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 with not making yourself of nothing. You're not doing it to be puffed up. You're doing it out of love. When you call unto God with that type of knowing that he's real and you're not trying to figure out if he's real, you just want to know more about him because you know that you haven't yet fully understand and comprehended the whole thing. That's why it says even though he placed it in you, you would still not know the mind. You would not know everything that God did in his full capacity. Lean not on your own understanding because his ways are greater than our ways. Amen. But as we dive in the word, he begins to show us more things as we get more mature. Praise God. How many know when you're at a certain level of maturity, you're able to be, there's able to be more things revealed to you. You don't have the same conversation with your four-year-old that you have with your 10-year-old. And you don't have the same conversation with your 10-year-old that you have with your 18-year-old or your 22-year-old or your 30. Y'all following me? A Alex had a certain day, oh, how I got here? Oh, you come out your mama's belly. How I got my mama's belly? He's not, he don't know what he's asking me. Jesus, Jesus called you there. We're going to talk about that when you get a little older. He's not mature enough to understand what he's asking me. A lot of times there's mysteries that we will never understand. We will never comprehend. We will never know the answer because we're not mature yet. But the more we grow in Christ, the more he can reveal to us. Amen. Deep calls to deep. When he said the deep has a certain cry, he said a certain sound of belief, vulnerability, love, compassion, and reverence. That's how you cry out unto the Lord. There's a cry. There's a roar. Do you, do you know lion, a lion's roar can travel up to five miles? A lion's roar. And then when I was looking at it, like, man, that just gave me another revelation because we are lions of the tribe of Judah, right? But I remember uh, at, uh, Pastor Rashawn could, could vouch for this. I called him earlier because he'd he, he, he be, he be with me a lot, you know? And there's a lot of situations that we've been into where God would just amplify our voice and magnify our voice. This one year, he's, he's, he's cool. This, this one year, where we was at? Rashawn? Where we was at? Yeah, wake up, brother. <laughs> where we was at? Miami? You know where we was at? Overtown, Miami. So Overtown... Under the bridge of Overtown, you got like blocks and blocks and blocks of a homeless community, tents, but they're doing more than that. They're, they're shooting drugs. They're, do, they're doing everything contrary to the word of God. So we was out there, and we had a little bitty speaker, and I'm preaching. And we're walking with the speaker. I'm preaching back and forth, and, and person over here shooting up drugs, and person over here doing somebody just rip somebody off and they sped off over here and I'm walking back and forth and I'm preaching because I know I'm not moved by what I see in the natural because I know the word and he says when I labor in his name my labor is never in vain and the word does not come back void that he called us to this block for a reason so then I post the speak up right here and I just begin to preach the gospel I'm preaching the gospel I'm sharing my testimony and then I started doing all, right before I could do an altar call there this lady come from one side of the block just drawn Drawn, came straight in front where we was at, crying, weeping, accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. We lay hands on her, cast a demon out of her. And then after that, she said, I was five blocks away and I heard your voice. And I was with somebody about to go do something that somebody I've been trying to break from. And I was like, I need to go over there. I need to go over there. And he said he wasn't going over there. So he went the other way, but she was drawn deep, calls upon deep. Amen. And God magnified my voice because the Bible says we're of the tribe of the Lion of Judah. Amen. Jesus Christ is of the tribe. He is the Lion of Judah. Amen. So when you look at Judah, Judah means to praise or praised. To praise or be praised. Jesus Christ, we're meant to praise him. Amen. He's meant to be praised. He's the tribe of the Lion of Judah. We, he's meant to be praised. We're tribe of the Lion of Judah. We're meant to praise. So come on my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me and lift up your song. Because you got a lion inside of those lungs. Come on. Get, get up and praise the Lord. Come on, let's do it together. Come on. So come, so come on, my, on soul. my soul. 
Oh, don't you get shy on me and lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Do it again, do it again. Come from the inside. So come on, my soul. With your belief. Oh, don't you get shy on me and lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Worship with us. So come on, my soul. Let's go. Oh, don't you get shy on me and lift up your soul. Come on. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. He'll give you garments of praise for your heaviness. Look, look, do it again. I'm telling you, some people are getting delivered right now, amen, because you're crying out from the inside, knowing that he's real, that he would never leave you, that he would never forsake you, that you're still breathing for a reason, that he's not done with you. You still have purpose, and that's why you're still alive, so we cannot waste time. This is a time of acceleration, amen. This is more than motivation. This is the word, infallible word of God. That's why we're here, to praise the living king, and there's something inside of us that calls us to praise. The living king is propelling us towards him and in his presence is the fullness of joy. It's not in your bank account. It's not in stature. It's not in clothes. It's in his presence. And we get it. He said, I will give you garments. Come on, somebody. I'll give you garments of praise for your heaviness. So come on, my soul. Let's go. Oh, don't you get shy on me and lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Let's go, church. So come on, my soul. Oh, don't, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. So come on my soul, oh, oh don't, don't you get shy on me and lift up your song, cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs, get up and praise the Lord. Hold on, do y'all do that at home? No. Not only there's no conviction, I know some of y'all do and I know some people not. Because I, I didn't start off there. Amen. But that the praise and worship is so powerful. When you're going through whatever you're going through, you need to tune everything out. You need to put that worship on. A lot of y'all are not getting in the presence of God because you're not worshiping God. You know the word, yeah, the word, you know, but it's the full word, amen. Because King David said, you enter my gates with thanksgiving and you enter my courts with praise. What happened when you're not praising the Lord? You're on the outside of the courts. I'm trying to get you in the presence because once you get in the presence, then he's going to give you everything you need to fight whatever it is that you're fighting. Because he's faithful, amen, and he's worthy to be praised. Praise God. Come on, I can't sing. But I think I, 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 to me, I sound good on that part because I'm doing it unto him. Thank y'all so much. So come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul. Oh, yeah. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Come on, church. Get up and praise the Lord. Wow. Woo-wee. Yeah. You know that's all we're going to do one day? Just praise the Lord yes. in the presence of the king. Yes. Amen. There's nothing compared to that. But there's a certain cry. There's a certain cry that, that, that you're just emptying yourself, all of your cares and all of your burdens. But it's a knowing that he's real. So you go into the source that you know can do everything about what you're going through. And a lot of times you're proceeding to go through because he's giving you these little steps, but you're not being obedient to the steps that he's giving you. He says, I will direct your steps. So what's the last? I always go back to that. What's the last thing he told you to do? Deep calls upon deep. Amen. Who wants to go deep? Amen. Psalms 42. As the deer pants 
for the water brooks. So pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? I was reading that. So then, I, then I'm studying tears. I've never been hunting in my life. No, I just started fishing. Yeah, I almost died on jet skis. I'm not going to tell you that story. I'm, I, look, I'm not, I, I, I go fish for men, praise God. But I was reading that. As the deer pants for the water brook, so pants my soul for you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? He was at a place to where he's just ready to meet him. He's going through it, but as a deer pants for the water brook, so pants my soul for you. So I started watching these videos about deers. I started doing researches on deers. And deers don't run like that unless they're being hunted. Deers are not just sprinting because they're vo they, they, they run out of breath. You could outrun a deer. They run out of breath quick, so they begin to pant. So that's why when you're in the, in, in the woods and you hear, like, they, they breaking out. But it's panting for the water brook for two reasons. It needs to get filled because it's running out of breath. It's panting. But another reason, they don't just need to drink the water. They need to get lost in the water. When dogs hunt... When wolves are hunting deers, it's gathering its scent. It can't hide in the bushes because it can smell it. But see, when it finds the water brook and it dives into the water, it kills the scent. So now the predator can no longer smell it to capture it. I'm trying to tell you there's a place, amen, that the devil can't find you in, amen. And that's a place when you dive deep into the living water. Jesus Christ is the water. And that's just so pants and you pant because, come on, can we be real? How many of y'all been running around? How many of y'all been anxious? How many how many of y'all been depressed? How many of y'all been broken? How many of y'all are going through it? I'm trying to just get you to the source, amen? Because then he'll fill you up. He'll give you living water where you will never thirst again, amen? And under the shelter of the Most High is where I'm going to hide, praise God, because that's the secret place that that coward devil can't find me. Come on, yeah, he's a coward. He got power but no authority. You got to give it to him. We ain't giving him nothing. My tears have been my food day and night. Getting in somebody's business right now. And I was weeping when he was giving me this. Because I know he's talking directly to some people, to his people. And I was at a place like this before. I'm not in that place no more. Thank God. Glory to God. And maybe you're in that place right now, but he wants to take you out of it. This is King David, man. Come on, a giant slayer. My tears have been my food day and night. While they continually say to me, where is your God? His tears are telling them, where is your God? Why are you going through all of this? Where is your God? The devil is a lie. He's the power and prince of the air. He will give you those questions. Why would a good God do this? Where was your God when that? And I'm here to tell you, if you keep walking, God is going to reveal purpose because there's always purpose in your pain. Always. God don't waste nothing. God has no wasted acts. My tears have been my food day and night while they continually say to me, where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise. With the multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. He poured out his soul within himself. When he was going through this, he remembered the times that he went into the house of the Lord and had joy. Can I tell you, he would have never went to the house of the Lord if he didn't believe in the Lord and he had joy in the Lord. So even though he was going through it, he emptied his soul out from within himself. And like, I know you're real. I remember being in your presence. I remember the joy that I felt. I poured myself out unto the Lord because deep calls upon deep. When you're going through it like that and you got that level of persecution on your life, you need to cry out unto the Lord. Not to Facebook, not to Instagram, not to Sister Blabbermouth or Brother Jappa Jaws, you heard me, that's going to put your business all over the place. You need to cry out unto the Lord. And you need to find you somebody that's going to hold you accountable. Faithful of the wounds of a friend. Somebody that you can confess to, amen, that you know they're not going to talk about you, but they're going to talk to God for you. So come on my soul, don't you get shy of me.
We're going to do a musical one day. I see it. <laughs> I see it. I see it in Jesus' name. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Who's ready to have a pilgrim feast? Hey, y'all don't have to. I know I am. Where are we going to eat? Why? Look at verse 5. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? That's why. And why are you disquieted within me? That means anxious, anxiety. And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet, mm, that's it right there. Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Countenance means face. For the help of his face. What is he saying? For the help of my relationship with you. I know you. I'm personal with you. He desires a relationship. So when he's going through all of that, what is he saying? Hope in, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his, of his countenance. I, I like to say it in the original text, face. Hope in God. You don't have to hope in nothing. Hope in God. Oh, I don't, there's no way I'm going to get out of this. Jesus Christ, the truth, the, life, the way, and the life. Amen? Amen. Okay, say, so, oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Hermon and from the mills of Mizar. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan. There's a reason he said Jordan. So I'm loving something like Jordan. I just started like he just dropping revelation. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan. And I instantly thought, picture Jesus Christ got, got, got baptized in the Jordan River. Amen. And the spirit of God he said, and that is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. I said the Jordan. And then I'm like, well, hold up. But that's New Testament. This is Old Testament. So how could he have seen that? And then God said, go to Psalms 22 when it says Psalms 22 begins and said, oh my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? When you look at Psalms 22, he pointed to the crucifixion. See, David was also a prophet of the Lord, amen? So he said, I remember you from the days of the Jordan. He's speaking in the prophetic right now. And then he also speaking in the his. oh, come on. I, I'm getting excited. He's also giving you a historic account. Because a lot of people quote when Moses parted the Red Sea, right? And the children of Israel came out of Egypt, right? But do you know that the waters of the Jordan were parted too before they was able to enter into the promise? Oh, oh, hold up. But check this out. But check it out. Check it out. Don't go before me. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it, out. it was the Levites that went in the water. The Levites were priests. But what, what else were the Levites? Worshippers. Man, it's something about this worship. Are you worshiping at home? Are you just waiting to come on Sunday? I mean, they do a good job, praise God, but you can't live off of that. Amen? Praise God? But check this out. They had to get in the water first. The waters wasn't parted yet. Once they was in the mist, once they was in the middle of the water. See, some of y'all trying to run back to shore. Oh, no, but he said if you just keep walking because you're walking in faith, but they was doing something. They was carrying something. They was carrying the Ark of the Covenant. Can I tell you today, we are still supposed to carry the Ark? Oh. Some of y'all are like, give me that Ark then, Pastor. I ain't got no Ark. What you talking about? This is like, like we got scholars. We got theologians. We got, I just come from, we got everything in here. Amen. So I got to do a, I got to do a sword off and hit everybody with pebbles. Amen. Some of y'all, some of y'all tell you, what, what, what kind of church is this again? <laughs> Bible, Church of the Living God. So let's talk about the all. Y'all want to talk about the all? They got a Saints game. What's the Saints record? What's the re what's the Saints records right now? Two of them. We undefeated. Get back to the ark. This was the ark. Wooden chest covered in pure gold with the lid called the mercy seat. Two stone tablets of the Ten Commandments, Aaron's rod, and a pot of manna. We're still supposed to carry that. So this is what he gave me. 
The faith we have in the completed work of the cross purifies us like gold. Through his mercy, he fulfilled the law so we can become priests that he will always provide for. You want me to break it down a little more? Okay, the wooden chest, right? The completed work of the cross. Amen? Covered in pure gold. The Bible says he purifies us like gold. But first we got to believe in the completed work of the cross. Amen? First we got to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? So he purifies us like gold. So it was a wooden chest covered in pure gold with the lid called the mercy seat. Who's rich in mercy? Okay, two stone tablets of the Ten Commandments. He didn't come to break the law. He came to fulfill the law because of his mercy. But it starts with the cross. We believe in the completed work of the cross. He purifies us like gold. He gives us mercy. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. The two stone tablets of the Ten Commandments. Amen. He fulfilled the law. Praise God. Because we couldn't do it in our own might. But through Christ we can do all things. Aaron's rod. That was the, the, the rod that flourished. Amen. That means provision. But that also means stature. That means you're a priest king. Oh praise God. And a pot of manna. That means the Lord will always provide for you. Not sometimes. Always. They always had fresh manna. Praise God. So then when I looked at that. Okay we priest kings. Y'all know we priest kings right. So 1 Peter 2, 9 says, but you are a chosen generation. That means he picked you. A royal priesthood. That means he sanctified you. A holy nation. That means he set you apart. His own special people. It doesn't matter who thinks you special or not. Praise God. You're his own special people. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his. No, no, no. Y'all got to say that. How you, how you say it, Ms. Paula? Marvelous life. He called you out of darkness. Maybe, come on. Have any of y'all been in darkness? Maybe a little dark? He called you out of that. So why are you going back? When you're light, you can't go back to darkness because when you step in it, that got the light up too. Amen? Darkness ain't even a thing. It's the absence of light. We are the light of the world. A city... Mm, Come on, somebody. Where's my scholars at? Y'all want to do part three? No, the Saints game's over. We good. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfall. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, his song shall be with me. There he goes, the song. A prayer to the God of my life. I will say to God, my rock. Why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with the breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance and my God. It sounds like he said that. In verse 5, put, put verse 5 back up there. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his continent. I praise him through my relationship with him, that I know he's good, that I know he's going to get me out of this. Now I praise him for me because he has a relationship with me. See, he switched the end part. It's my relationship with him, but it's his relationship with me. Son, and you're a daughter. He'll never forsake you. He's still with you. Even in your mess. That's why you're here today. Because he is a merciful God. But he's not trying to keep you comfortable in your mess. Because he created you to do some great things. And God forbid, if you die in sin, there's a real hell. I'd rather get you caught up on heaven because if you could get focused on heaven, you're going to miss hell. But hell is a real place. We can't be this way, that way. Wishy-washy today, up and down, if I feel like it. No, 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 no. We made a commitment and a vow before a holy God. Amen? We are the bride. He is the groom. Praise God. Today is the day of salvation, declares the Lord. Y'all want to keep going? We got to go to the deep. It takes work to dig a well, right? 
But let Jesus will be your shovel and your muscle. He'll dig it through him. He's the water and the well. You draw from him and he gives it to you, but you got to draw. You got to dig. Who wants to go deep? As he, as, he, as he was giving me this word, and, and you know, I'm not, I, I'm not pointing nobody out, but this, this modern day church thing. And he said, man, too many churches are splashing water in the shallows. Amen. It looks like a move of God. Amen. They're just playing in the water, though. Yeah. No, we want to go deep. Amen. We want the deep things of the Lord. And you know, you know, the deeper you go in water, the greater the pressure is. You know, man has it that man still in science to this day does not have the equipment that's able to fully penetrate the depths of water because the deeper you go in the water, the pressure builds up to where your chest will collapse. You, you, you know, water is the only thing that manifests itself in three different components. And you see it is water, vapor, and ice cubes. That's three different dispensations, but it's all water. I'm talking about the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the three dispensations, but he's one. Come on, somebody. The deep things of the Lord, that you got to dive into the deep things of the Lord. And the deeper that you go in the Lord, the pressure's going to build up. You're going to get pressure. But pressure produces, amen? It, was, it is good that I have been afflicted. Everything that I went through, now I see it is good. It is good that you're being afflicted. It's producing something inside of you, amen? Come on, women of God. Come on, men of God. Stop trying to pray away the pressure and receive it, amen? See, they had to go in the water. When they got in the middle of the water, then he parted it, amen? So just dive in the water. Look, the three Hebrew boys, they had to go in the fire. But guess who showed up? But they had to jump in. Come on, somebody. Mr. Steve, how you taught Ashley how to swim? You know how you taught her how to swim? He threw her in. I'm trying to get y'all to go deep, but some of y'all like, I can't swim. Learn. How you going to learn? What you did? And he really did. He was going to name Ashley Dusty, but Miss Paula wouldn't let him. True story. We got to dive in. Look, 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 I was looking at this suit, right? The water pressure. They got this suit. It's called an atmospheric diving suit. It's a small, one-person, articulated, submersible, which resembles a suit of armor with elaborate pressure joints to allow articulation while maintaining an internal pressure of one atmosphere. That's the suit that they have that allows them to dive deep into the waters, but they still can't go to the bottom. Man, I wonder how great a suit of Jesus Christ is. You're not going to go deep unless you're dead and hid in Christ Jesus. You're not going to go deep until you've been baptized in Christ Jesus. Amen? He says those that have been baptized into Christ, have what? Have what? All right, let me show you in the Word. Galatians 3.27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You wearing Jesus. You love Jesus. You gave him your heart. Amen. You accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. But the Bible says you must be dead and hid in Christ Jesus. That means you got to die to yourself so you can live in him in the mystery unto the Gentiles. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So it's like it, he's in me, but I'm in him. Yeah, because he's all over the place at one time. He's in you. He's outside of you. He's all around you. And the deeper you go, you got this suit called Jesus. So then he brought me to the word that said in uh, where, where, where is it at? 2 Corinthians 4 8. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. You know why you're not crushed? Because you're wearing Jesus. You know why all the stuff that's coming against you hasn't yet broken you to where you're dead? Because you're wearing Jesus. And I'm here to tell you that's a suit that you can't wear out. I mm, some. Then we keep going. Man, who's ready to go deeper? 
deep calls upon thee. Simeon was called to the Lord. Deep calls upon thee. Over and over in the Bible, the woman with the issue of blood was drawn to Jesus Christ, the only one that could do something about her condition. And she tried everything else. Maybe you tried everything else, but I'm here to tell you, Jesus Christ can do it. Deep calls upon deep, but you need to get into the deep things of the Lord. When is the last time you fasted? Are you praying at home continually? The Bible says pray without ceasing. It says pray about everything. Are you praying about everything? Are you praising and worshiping in your king? Amen. Come on, somebody. We got to walk this thing all the way out. We're going to go further because I want to go into the blind man and how they told him to be quiet. Amen. But he got even louder. See that deep called the pawn deep. They said be quiet. He got louder. Amen. I don't know who's trying to silence your worship. I don't know what's trying to silence your worship, but you got to get louder. Amen. Deep calls to deep. Praise God. So this altar call is about you receiving the deep things of God. It's about you being obedient to the voice of God. It's about you moving forward to everything that God has for you. It's about you not being silent. Your worship is not going to be silent. Your prayers are not going to be silent. And you want God to reveal more because to whom much is given, much is required. Amen. Who wants much? Well, much is required. Amen. It's not time to play church. It's time for acceleration. Praise God. The knowledge is increasing in this time. He wants to drop it on you, but not for you. Knowledge puffs up, love edifies. Amen? So this is for the deep things of the Lord. That's what this altar call is about. I want you to come forward, and we're going to pray that over you. A deeper conviction, a deeper revelation, a deeper commitment. Amen? God will meet your commitment, praise God. And that same level is going to be given back to you. Praise God. Praise God. Tap your neighbor if they want to come up here. Tell them come up here. Deep calls to deep. Praise God. If there's no room, you could get in the middle or get on the ends. Or stand up where you are and raise two hands in the air. Let there be some movement, some type of activation. Amen. Praise God. But we start everything with a declaration because nothing good is done apart from Christ. Amen. But, but, but deep calls unto deep. So we don't just say this repetitiously. We don't just say this traditionally. We say this because this is what the word says. If you confess Jesus Christ as Lord and believe in your heart that God rose him from the dead, then you too will be saved. Praise God. So let's say it from, from this. This is the most important thing. Maybe you've done it before. Maybe today is a recommitment. I believe everything's going to change today because he says glory to glory. So you might have came in in a level of glory, but he wants you to leave out on another level of glory for his glory. Praise God. Repeat after me with authority. Lord Jesus, we believe that you died, crucified, and you rose again on the third day. Through the power, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Coward devil, get under my feet. You have no authority. I have authority through the blood of Jesus Christ. Today, I repent of all my sins. My life is no longer my own. It's yours, Lord. Have your way. Coward devil, get under my feet. You have no authority. I have authority through the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray and let the church scream. Amen. Oh, Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you honor and glory for you are worthy of it. Lord, I pray for a deeper revelation over your children right now. That you give us all a deeper revelation, Lord. Because the Apostle Paul said, I have not yet arrived. Yes, he pressed towards the mark of the high call in Christ Jesus. 
Father, I pray for a deeper revelation. I pray for a deeper commitment. I pray for a deeper conviction. Father, I pray that you will reveal your face to every last person here under the sound of my voice. Father, I pray right now that anxiety must go, that depression must go, that addiction must go, that strife must go, that bitterness must go. Oh, All things that are not of you have no place over your children. Father, I speak your infallible word over them. I pray for a release right now in the spiritual realm that anything that has been being held up at the coward devil was trying to hold up through sin that it has lost its sting right now that it has no grips over your children right now that every chain must be dismantled that anything that is not of you any demonic stronghold it must flee right now and we cast it out and send it back to a desolate place father I speak the fire of God fall upon your people like never before a quickening a fresh breath and a fresh fire that they will magnify your name and in your presence is the fullness of joy so blanket them with a joy that they can't even speak about in the almighty name of Jesus Christ we pray and let the church scream Amen. amen joy unspeakable